Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, and welcome to another episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. And today, I'm going to try to improve the sound system that I've got set up for my computer over by the window. Now, the problem is that it does work, but I'm not getting very much power out of it. And I have a couple of ideas of what could be causing that. It's either A, a weak power supply, or B, the actual amplifier itself isn't very good. But whatever the reason, I'm going to find out. Okay, I now have a DVD playing in the computer. Now, obviously I'm not going to play any of the episodes for copyright reasons. So we'll just stay here with the menu screen and the sound that the menu screen makes, because it's got a lot of bass in it. Now, I've just got it to the point before it starts to clip, which is about 270 millivolts through the speakers. And now I'm going to turn the volume up. And you can hear just how smegging terrible that sounds. Okay, I've now taken everything off the table and lifted it up so you can see the underside of it and what's there. This is the actual amplifier itself, which uses a couple of LM383 chips. Each of these chips should be able to deliver about 7 watts at the most. And this power supply only delivers about 350 milliamps, which is nowhere near enough to power the chips. Because each of these has about 60 milliamps quiescent current. So that's about 120 milliamps, so that's taken about half the power supplies, well, about a third of the power supplies um, capacity, so I've only really got about two thirds of that left to play with. So you can really see how there's a reduction in power there. Also, I'm going to change that heatsink because that piece of metal is really not the best thing to use. Over here I've got another thing which is probably much better to use as a heatsink. And over here I've got loads of circuit boards and things. A few good heat sinks on here. And we'll take a close up of some of these components. Just wait for the camera to focus in on it, of course. You can see these got these heat transfer pad things on them. So I'm going to take those off and use those to connect the chips to the heat sink. First things first though, want to try to improve this power supply. If I can get more power out of this, about one or two amps, that should be a major improvement over the uh, original. So I'm going to power it up right now. I know this isn't the safest way to do it. I'm just going to plug it in and perform a few little tests. I think one reason this power supply is so weak is because of this little tiny transformer it has. It's an absolutely pitchy little thing that probably just cannot really do anything. Now I'm going to connect it directly to this amp meter that I've made, which measures, measures up to 4.5 amps. It's not the most accurate meter, but it will give me some indication of how much power this thing has. I'm just going to quickly do it. And the needle barely moves at all. I th actually, I think it's unplugged itself, hasn't it? And it's not even making its way up to the half amp measure um, marking. So, I'm going to try to change this transformer and see if we get any more power out of it. Okay, I've now replaced the transformer. This transformer is about 15 volts and the old one provides about 16 volts. So I don't think one volt's going to make too much difference. Though by looking at the secondaries on this transformer, that is reasonably thick wire, so I'm not exactly sure why it's not... Um, if it is the transformer, of course, why I'm not getting much current from it. But anyway, I'm going to plug this one in and see if it's any improvement. Okay, well it's on and 
We should have about 14 volts at the output because when this transformer is rectified to DC it should still be somewhere around 20 volts so there's still plenty of headroom for the regulation circuits to regulate it. Let's just see what the voltage is. Hope you can see it on the camera. We've got about 14.2 volts there. So that's pretty much okay. Now I'm going to quickly test the amps, see if there's any more current this time. No, that's still barely moving the meter. So all that was for nothing. Still stuck with a cruddy power supply. So you know what I'm going to do? Smash it with an hammer! Actually no, I'm going to make my own supply. Because this thing is a bunch of pants. One thing I was planning on doing was changing this part here, which I thought was a transistor. Only I had a closer look at it and found out that it's an LM317T voltage regulator. And that's a 3 amp voltage regulator, so why there's such little current there I really don't know. But anyway, nothing I can do about that. I can't even remove this heatsink because it's riveted on rather than just screwed on. So I think it's about time I made my own power supply. Okay, I have a spare transistor ready. And I've put it on a heatsink. And before anybody says anything, yes, I have put a thermally conductive pad between the transistor and the heatsink. So you don't need to bitch about that. I've already thought about that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm still going to use this as part of the new power supply. If we take a close look at the circuit board, I've marked where the output is, where it's positive and where it's negative. And I've also marked where the main filter capacitor is, and also where it is positive and where it's negative. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the collector of this transistor up to the positive going to connect the base, which is this leg here, to the positive output of the power supply. And then the emitter of the transistor is going to go to whatever's being powered, and obviously the negative of the power supply will also go to what's being powered. Okay, it's well on its way to being completed now. I have the booster transistor wired in, which is just an ordinary TIP 3055. Now let's see what voltage we've got. Okay, we've got about 13.8 volts there, which is pretty much what I expected. It's always got to take into account the voltage drop across the transistor. Well, I'm going to put this back onto here now, and we'll see how well it works. Also, I think I might just as well put the original transistor back in, I mean the original transformer back in, because judging by the thickness of the secondary windings, this could probably do about 4 amps, which is enough. Right, well, the other transformer's back in. And one thing I did forget to do was test to see if this really is giving out more amps now. So I'm just going to do a quick little test with that. see just trying to make it so I'm not blocking the your view with my hands like I normally like normally do and yes there's much more power there now well it's all back together now as you can see I start to put everything back on the table pound the amplifier from the upgraded supply I'm now going to turn the volume up from this rather dilapidated volume control I've got there. And it certainly seems to have done the trick. When I turn the volume up. No more clipping. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm going to sit back and watch a bit of Red Dwarf. So until next time, good smegging by. Well, that's it for this episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Remember, if you like these videos, feel free to subscribe, you'll be glad you did, and tell your friends about Cool Dude Clem and his Electronic Workshop. And, if you want to see the previous episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, click on the box on the right. Or, if you want to see more of my videos, click on me right now to visit my channel.
that's just about it for now. I'll see you next time. Well, I won't see you next time. But anyway, until next time, goodbye.